Hello folks, Fight to Ivorist, welcome along to another video from Gundog and Fly. And this time around I have, well, at least for myself, a very interesting video. I came across searching on the internet for different fly fishing stuff as I do, and I came across a very short video, it's only a minute and a half, I'll let you see it in a minute, but I found it absolutely fascinating. And as a consequence of watching that little video, I am now going to take in a little road trip. And I hope you're going to join me. I'm heading up to County Kilkenny, where I'm going to discuss what I saw in the little video and a few other things besides. So watch the video and uh, I'll talk to you again after that little video when I'll be in County Kilkenny, so be sure to stay tuned. We're going to have a look at two pieces of kitchen, kitchen paper, toilet paper as you can see, both looking the exact same, completely scent free, uh, no visual effects. One is treated, one is not treated. So we'll have a look now and see what happens. So when we pour water onto kitchen paper, we all know the result. It gets wet. It gets messy and wet, as you can see there, becomes completely broken down, all mushy and squishy and completely destroyed. There's nothing much you can do with that after that. Okay, so once we've treated a piece of the same exact same toilet paper as I showed you, with our dry X agent, which is a hydrophobic, eco-friendly, non-toxic agent, scent-free, it's water-based. So basically what happens is the water takes the agent inside the materials and protects it from the inside out. When we pour water onto the very same, see what happens? Nothing. It takes on no water. No soakage whatsoever. You can see the droplets just pouring off the water and it's completely hydrophobic. You want dry flies to float? Get a dry X. Treat them in dry X 12 hours before you fish them, folks, and they'll float forever. Bone dry, flapping in the wind. Check it out. Skyfly.com. So, folks. I've arrived. Peter, driver here. This is the man that developed this product. You saw the video. I'm absolutely fascinated to know more about this. Um, hey lads, if you're ever in the, the market for anything, look at this place. It's, 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 like, it's like, it's like what do they call? What do they call it? The treasure hunt years ago when we were children. You know, you'd be looking for the treasure. Headaches. There's 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 uh, like yeah. it's probably it's probably the best stop fly tying. Certainly, the fly tying shop in Ireland is it? Ah, it is. look, we we try we try and stock as much as we can, George. But everyone knows it's impossible to get. It's so hard to get product now. Yeah, you know, we try to have a, a diversity of product mixed all across the board. Yeah. But again, there's some good shops around, and we, we you know we, we we hold our own. Yeah, put it that way, we hold our own. Well, I can't see. I, there's nothing that I can think of that I can't see. Anyway, <laughs> there's everything in here, so I'm I, I, like I'm trying to keep my pocket locked. <laughs> anyway, um. This product, Peter, you know, like the, the the folks there, you've seen you've seen the introductory video there of uh, this product in use. Now, for a dry fly fisher and anyone who knows me or watches my videos or know that's my favourite way to fish, anything that can give me an extra little bit of edge, I'm always very interested. And in. this product would appear to be one of those because I've been using various products down through the years, like we all have. Sort of, Gink would be the one now that I would have used a lot down through the years. But there's a particular issue with floating um, CDC flies. They can be particularly, the gink is no good for, I've never found anything that would really work to, to, to make a CDC fly, would say, consistently float. Generally speaking, after catching one or two trout, you have to put it in the box and tie on another fly. They just, it just, there's no product that I'm aware of that'll work. And seeing this, or seeing that little video, I mean, it was just amazing. How, how, where did this come out of? Where did the idea come from, Peter? Thanks, George. Uh, look, at, it's something that's been in the back of my head for a, a many, many years. I was at a competition abroad many years ago, and I was witnessing a, a dry fly man, a man fishing dries, and catching a lot of fish. And while he was returning to the river, I, I was observing that he wasn't really applying it to the dry fly. He wasn't doing much treatment with it. He wasn't even using armadou. Mm. It was a quick flash in the air, very snap, mm. fast, yeah. line accelerated snap. Mm. And next thing, dry fly on the water. And I could see the dry fly just coming down the water. 
that fucking what the you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's like and this was happening it wasn't just a once occurrence I watched this over a three hour period like mm. I haven't seen it now he went to change the fly because the fly broke down you know mm. the materials we use in dry flies are quite brittle as well mm. so the fly eventually broke down but there was I definitely recognised that there was something different here he had done something to that fly or he had something on that fly that made it an awful lot more effective yeah. for speed and everything and treatment and keeping it floating and it was the, the CDC it was a small piece of CDC but like it was sitting so prominent on the water yeah. after catching the fish and going back out right so obviously you knew there was something so up, yeah, yeah so like every inquisitive angler I went up and I asked a question he was going to say me no no and if I was going to learn something I was going to learn something so mm. and like I was suspected it was top secret so <laughs> he, he said he'd give me the fly I remember the conversation I said what have you got on the fly mm. or he said, I went down to the great fishing after the session was over and he says oh thank you very much thank you very much I'll give you the fly I said oh no I don't want the fly I said I, I know what fly it is mm. I said what's on the fly <laughs> yeah yeah I said what's on the fly and he yeah. goes oh top secret yeah, can't yeah, tell you yeah. but anyway after lots of investigation over time I found out uh, it was um, leather shoe protector Oh, really? Leather shoe protector. That's what he was. You can mm. buy it in a household or any store, uh, high street store and stuff like that. You yeah. go to Super Value Duns and buy aerosol cans of leather shoe protector. You can go to a shoe store. If you yeah. buy a pair of leather shoes in a good shoe store, they will sell you, they yeah. will give you free a little yeah. can, aerosol can mm. of leather shoe protector. Okay? Right. Semi water based. Um, and what you do is if you spray the shoes, the, 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 the H2O takes the. Do you want to get that here, Josh? Yeah. <laughs> it's probably something important. <laughs> <laughs> That's just part of the Do, yeah. Sorry about the interruption there, folks. Uh, somebody ringing about fishing. <laughs> that never stops. But yeah, so, so back to it. So anyway, leather shoe protector is what they were using on dry fly. And it was. It was a revelation at the time for me yeah. as a fly fisherman. I have to be honest, you I've know? never heard of it now. And I've been using it. I'm talking 10, this is 10 years ago. Yeah. George, this is, this How could you never tell me? Huh? How How you? you must be watching my videos because it's up, it's up on all my videos. I explained it on all the dry fly sessions. But, um, so yeah, so I used it. Like I went out and bought several different products of it. It's cheap, it's chips like. And I was mm. blind to my dry flies. Yes, it's scented. It's very hard to know. There's no real set of ingredients of how toxic it is, yeah. um, which is obviously very important for our environment. Mm. Um, it's aerosol, so it's a very fine mist spray, so mm. they have to put something in there. So, you know, while it was doing a job, it wasn't the finished product. And it was always in the back of my head, you know, I really should look into that a bit more and try and see if, if mm. there's something that we come up with. There is not necessarily, like, there is lots of different floatings out there. There's rows of stuff there, sprays and stuff like that. Yeah. But something that's water-based, 100% water-based. This is the thing, this is what I was trying to get to. Most stuff that's on the market today that's a gel or a spray is silicone-based, yeah. okay? And silicone basically puts a layer on the outside of it and protects it from the outside in. Yeah. So nothing can penetrate for any length, you know, for, for whatever duration of time that's yeah. life expectancy of, of that spray yeah. is. And eventually, after two or two takes it, it breaks it down. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't really stop the capillary action of things sticking together. Mm. And, you know, the silicone spray breaks down. Okay. And that's, you know, a lot of your gels and stuff like that, they're silicone based. And it, it does the job. It, it, right. it certainly does help. Like, so it's not that they don't do their job, they do their job. But if you've got something water based, this is where I was going with it. If I got something water based that would take an agent, a hydrophobic agent, into the material, soak into the material, the water right. evaporates. And the, the hydrophobic agent is left inside the material right. and protects it from the inside out. As opposed to being on the outside. Now we have a whole different kettle yeah. of fish. Now we're talking about something completely different. Right. Something that's really going to give it durability. Mm. The, the actual the, the, the properties of the agent durability and mm. the effectiveness of the agent durability over time. Yeah. Catch, you know, and it's based on the whole thing that if if you put a silicone spray 100% silicone spray on a leather shoe and take a, take a walk down the yard and come back your shoes will be destroyed because a layer on the outside everything sticks to it it kind of just of those, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's not a hydrophobic it's yeah. not a hydrophobic it's silicone based mm -hmm. agent right so where a hydrophobic agent is that's what leather shoe guys do they have this hydrophobic agent and the, the bit of H2O they put into it the spray takes that agent inside the leather and protects it from the inside out so now yeah. you can wear your shoes yeah. out in the pub and mm -hmm. you can spill drink on them and it's mm -hmm. not going to stain them too bad mm -hmm. you, you can clean them Okay, mm. so if we could go 100% hydrophobic and water-based, well then we, we've tapped into something that could happen. Together. Absolutely. Now I'm not saying it's absolutely, completely, 100% and if I put it on a dry fly and I go out there and I catch 40 fish on it, yeah. that, that dry fly is going to stay floating for me for the entire three hour session. That's not true because well, that would be a reasonable expectation. Materials anyway, start to break down. Of course Materials does, start yeah. to break down. Yeah. Things get crushed. Things that, mm. And then, you know, you need to switch your dry fly after a couple of 
or a duration, particular duration of time, over, uh, depending yeah. on the fly, and depending yeah. on the materials used to, to tie mm. that fly. Okay, um, and that's the basic theory behind it. You spray it on the fly. The thing about this is you got to spray it on the fly. And I would soak my flies quite well. I put them in a little tub after I finished tying them, and I put a good couple of squirts in this in a close lid, and I give them a good rattle. Yeah, make make sure all that's gone in around it. Yeah. Really, it's soaking them. I mm. soak them for twenty minutes, half an hour, whatever you want. Yeah. And then I take them out and I put on a piece of kitchen paper. And tomorrow morning when I come back, them flies are ready to go. Right. We recommend twelve hours curing time. Right. Okay, um, and, that's and, the that, and the same thing would apply with CDC. Absolutely. Now here's the thing: if yeah. you have an emerger yeah. and you got a quill body or a threaded threaded body emerger, yeah. and you only want the CDC or the deer hair or the comparison yeah. flow, you treat the materials before you use them in the flies. So I have right. a little tub of CDC up there, about the same size as that box, and you, you spray and it all that the CDC. Yeah. I know is treated. Right. And if I find time clink hammers or emergers, yeah. well, you or want the body to go subsurface. Now you're on the money. Yeah. I don't want it mm. because if you spray dry X on your dry fly, mm. and you sit it in the water. It'll be very hard for that body to penetrate the surface film. Of course, because it's, it's completely it's hydrophobic. hydrophobic. It's hydrophobic, It's of course, completely yeah. hydrophobic yeah. because it's on the yeah. video. So yeah. it doesn't. So that's that's where we came up with it, and that's the story behind it. Like, and, and, and how, wh where did you? How did you start? Say the development. How did you figure out what chemicals are what? So I had, I had in my head of exactly what I wanted to try and achieve. So I start googling. Where do you start? Everyone starts yeah, googling. Yeah, yeah, so I start googling, googling. But I know I couldn't do it on my own. I haven't got the intent. I've, mm. I have a vision of what I want to achieve. Yeah, but you didn't have any technical know-how. Yeah, didn't yeah. take them So I said, I've got to find someone. So mm. I start Googling and Googling, and I found a doctor in chemical engineering, a girl. Right. And I sent her an email with the theory behind what I want to achieve. I knew she was into mixing chemicals of different, of similar nature for yeah. other, other applications and stuff. Yeah. And I said to her, and she kind of got back to me a bit, and we started chatting over a while, became friendly, and, and then she started becoming more intrigued with the idea and stuff like that, and she sent me some samples. This is going on over a two-year period now. So we've right. been working on this for two years. And sent me samples. I was happy. Again, the end result was good. Mm -hmm. the, the flies were becoming hydrophobic. Yeah. But some of the agents we were using to take it in, I wouldn't say weren't completely non-environmentally uh, friendly, but there, there was an, a non-toxic, but there was a scent off it. Right. And, and it was just the way we were mixing. The stuff we were mixing just, just mm -hmm. wasn't mm -hmm. right there. Till eventually, we kind of stumbled across something else between the two of us one day. And we said, let's, let's try this and see if this will be the agent to take the, um, the, the hydrophobic yeah. agent side that's non-scented completely you could take that bottle and drink it I'm not going to do so it, this is completely scent free completely scent free completely and it's clear, environmentally free non-toxic environmentally free yeah. environmentally friendly the yeah. whole shebang it is and it's taken right. us two years to get it so her help and just two of us working together on it and looking at different agents and how it's yeah. and different stuff that's what we came up with and yeah it's well the it's, video is very impressive i have to say yeah and that was single ply so what i even done for that video was i, I put single ply paper so you take toilet paper and you split yeah. it in half make it super weak you know yeah, what i mean a course. drop of rain would destroy it of course it would and you can you can put that on the tap for 20 minutes it's unbelievable and that's i've never seen anything like it. i was seriously impressed when i saw it so much so that i believe you're going to give me a free bottle of it today oh we're going to take away a free bottle to test on your <laughs> summer dries just your for summer the, dries just for testing so, I purposes suppose, and, and for us as competition fishermen, we're always looking for that one more fish. Yeah, of course, we're always yeah. looking for that one little thing that yeah, would give us difference. that. No, it might give us two maybe, or it might mm. give us three. So I, everything I do with my setups and fly fishing is competition based. And I yeah. try to set myself up with all the applications I use or all the systems and all the product I use. That's going to give me one right. more fish. Using mm. a wax, invisibility is going to be one fish. I haven't determined how many fish this is going to give me per session on a dry fly session, yeah. but it's definitely going to be a couple of fish. Of course it is. And that's a huge thing for us. Of course it is. Yeah. Because if I can say, if I'm dry fly fishing for a three hour session, I could spend at least 40 minutes to an hour of that dry fly session treating dry flies, repairing false dry flies, casting. false casting, mm -hmm. replacing dry flies. Yeah. If this can cut 10 to 15 minutes of that. Yeah. Now, a good dry fly man in a rise, how many trout mm. would you catch in 10 minutes? On a good rise, and a good dry fly. I'd catch 20 in 10 minutes, I'd say. Yeah. That's your effect. That's, that's, your, that's your money there. And, uh, yeah. um, what was I going to say? I'm going to give this a serious tryout. And, um, Do and play with it. And say, yeah, yeah and absolutely. Say. But um, <coughs> what was I going to say to you? Um, that if you wanted to find this stuff it's obviously available here from peter shop this uh, yeah. piscari fly you get it online as well it's called dry x how did you come up with that name oh, sure, i just thought it sounded good <laughs> <laughs> sitting down having a little bottle of beer one night i come up with some of my best ideas when you have a bottle of beer man of beer. but um, i used to come up with yeah. some very bad ideas when i used to drink <laughs> bottles of beer <laughs> and so i gave it up we're looking for something i was looking for something catchy it's a sales yeah. thing too looking yeah. for something catchy yeah looking for something that sounds good excellent dry peter x really was, was interesting there. and we're going to talk about something else now in a minute another innovation so now um, anyone who's into Euro nymph in particular will be very very much interested in what's coming here um, 
it was a particular issue that you came across, or I suppose it's a common problem. Everyone, every, every, everyone, everyone, everyone suffers from the same, same problem. Everyone. Anyone who's, you're in, in particular, you're in, yeah, but it also applies to any sort of fly fishing, really, doesn't well, it? Well, it kind of does, and it, it, yeah, absolutely. Like, well, you a fly expl line prevention explain the line. problem, first of all, right? So, the problem is line stick, okay? Line stick um, is when you get capillary action between the fly line, a wet fly line, and a wet rod. And the, the 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 water in between acts like a an agent or a, a magnet kind of thing. Yeah, it keeps it together. Stuck. So especially when we're 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 using light tapered leaders like this, they travel up the blank of a rod. Yeah. And what happens is they get stuck to it because the what rod is wet, the line is wet. Yeah. Okay. And then when you try to flick those little nymphs, yeah, or flick the little leader or the drive, whatever you're flicking out of time, yeah, it's stuck to it, and it's it can it's friction basically. Oh, some sometimes it doesn't happen. Mm. An awful lot of time it does on a wet day or the rod and reel fall in or whatever may happen or you fall in, the rod and reel gets wet. Mm. And then it just sticks with it. And then it's impossible. Like it's, mm. It'll drive you nuts. I'd have to tap the rod a couple times or whatever to get it to stay away. Now, a solution was, came up, and it does fix the problem, is guys get mono and they resin them in here at the bottom of the rod and they wrap the whole... Oh, I've seen that winding around the, the rod. They wrap the whole rod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. It makes them real really close. Ugly, don't it? Mate, real close now. A hell of a lot closer. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it puts a ridge on it. Now, because you have that ridge in, you now eliminate the chances of capillary action, right? Of where... But it the, still sticks to it to some point. It I great, don't... Does it? Yeah, I don't wrap my rods because it destroys the rod. Yeah. I, and I don't like it. It adds an awful lot of weight. So you're yeah. fixing one problem, but in a way you're creating another problem anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I don't like doing it. Um, but it does it does help solve that problem okay right. so along with the development of our dry x there was always another uh, you had that in the, in i had another mind. idea of you know what if we could come up with an agent that we could apply to our rods mm. and even also apply to our mono or a fly yeah. line yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. and make them hydrophobic eliminating the the, uh, the ability of water to act as that magnet. yeah like okay? a magnet yeah, yeah mm. so it's just hydrophobic yeah okay so we have this actually only arrived in say to my door Okay, this is a little bottle of. It will be. I don't know what's going to be called. It will be Dry X something. Okay, mm -hmm. so Dry X is our main brand. Um, this is the last sample. Okay, so I've had about ten of these bottles to date over the last year. Okay, this is the last sample I have as to be tested. We've got very close with it. So basically, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to apply it to my blank and my fly rod mm -hmm. with a very specialized sponge. Yeah. Okay, that does not absorb. Now, when we're talking about the, the amount it would take to treat my dry fly, we're only talking about 0.5 of a mil yeah. to treat the dry fly. Very, very tiny amount. You don't need much. It's two dimensional. Yeah. Okay, so you don't need much. You don't need to much treat, volume. To, to treat, th this is sort of the end of a 10 stage development. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is the final product. This should be, I'm hoping, to be the final right. one. So you're going to apply this to the rod. I'm going to cut my four sections of my fly rod yeah. with, a little, with a little sponge, yeah. and I'm going to let it dry there. For it, it's not visible. You're not going to see. You might see a little droplet, maybe if yeah. you apply too much or whatever. But you're not going to see it really. It's going to dry in under under rod blank. Now we've been testing with loads of stuff all along. It doesn't have no impact on the rod blank whatsoever. Right. No impact whatsoever. Um, apply it to the rod blank. I'm going to give it about twenty minutes, half an hour to to dry, to touch dry kind of. Now it's, even when it's wet, it's, it's not. It, it, it's, if I was wet, that's exactly how it look. Okay. Yeah. But we give it twenty minutes or so to to kind of bond to, to, mm -hmm. to the to the resin of the rod. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a specialised microfiber cloth and I'm going to buff it. Okay, so I'm going to buff the four sections. The whole process now is going to take me 20 minutes, I'll have a rod done. Half right. an hour, I'll have okay. a rod done. But I'll, I'll have waiting time in between. Okay? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Seconds just to buff it. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then the rod is now treated. Right. Then you've got to give it six hours cure in time. Right. So okay. overnight, basically. Basically overnight. Basically overnight. Yeah. Six hours cure in time. Mm. And then when you're finished, the end result should be... That the flight, that the line, the leader cannot the possibly line, stick to the rod. Will not stick. Will not bond because if a droplet hits it, it just it's it falls off. It can't just, hold on. Can't. It, it's and hard. how long will that treatment last on the rod? I know you're sort of you don't know because it's a new product, but like you could speculate. Okay, so the pe that the people that are helping me, the doctor, the, the doctors in physical engineer or chemical engineer that helped me put this together, are saying we're giving you something like a, a five to ten year warranty with this stuff. Okay. Really. That's what they're saying. I'm not going to say that. I think in my recommendation and following the testing I've been doing for the last year and the other mm. stuff, I'm going to say, coat your rod every year. Coat your rod, start of the season, clean down, or even the end of the season, when you clean down your fly rods, take your right. little, your little so spray and, and, the and give people, it a coat. The, 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 we call them the laboratory people or whoever, they're saying that if you apply this to the rod, that it has a potential lifespan of five to ten years. Before it actually breaks, starts to before, break down. Before that, that, that stuff itself breaks starts down. Starts to break down, yeah. So you could potentially, like... Um, 
fish with, for five years without the line well, sticking. I, I think but you, you just for the for I, I would be quite sake. happy once a year. Apply to your yeah. rod once a year, and your your As rod. As they say in Irish, a ragle and a hagle, just in case. <laughs> just in case. Right. And yeah. just your your rod to be hydrophobic then, and just stop that line stick. It's an absolute nightmare yeah. for for your nymphers or people that are. You know, even if you have a long leader and a dry fly leader or a dry dropper leader. And yeah, it can be a problem. Yeah. You know, and mm. a lot of people are in this Euro dinking now where it's a crossover between. So we got the Euro nymphin leaders on dry fly rods and we're dry dropping with them or even just straight dry fly them. And there's no old fly line being used anymore. It's, it's just the, 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 the mechanics of the rod and um, the taper that's in your leader. And you're able to just dabble the little dry flies and stuff there like that. And <laughs> so is that sort of 10 carats, is it? Or? It's heading right that way. It's yeah. heading right that way, George. Because I've never and seen that now. Have you not? Yeah, Euro dinking, they call it. Euro <laughs> dinking. Oh, holy uh, fuck, what they come up with next? The, I tell you, yeah. <laughs> but um, even for the likes of that, just to get the flick and get a little, maybe to add a couple of inches line or get a bit of momentum there yeah. and transfer that energy from the rod down the tapered leader to take a bit more line into the yeah. landstreet. If, if it's line stick, it's just stuck to it. Like, it doesn't yeah. happen. There's no transfer of energy. Well, I think there's great credit due to you, you know, Peter, so for, for thinking along those lines. Because, I mean, it would never occur to me, well, I'm not really into your and infant as such. I do it now and again. But, like, I, I would never, obviously, it's a big thing for you because of the competition scene. Yeah, yeah. That, like, so, like, obviously, you're going to be thinking about all that. But there's loads of other people that haven't thought of it. Absolutely. Like, and, uh, so, and like, there's credit due to you for... Another for, application that this could potentially be good for is when you're bank fishing. So, I was bank fishing there recently in a competition. Mm. And I had a 40 plus 8 weight on a seven weight rod yeah. and I could hardly get the head out of the top of the rod mm. because of the muck that was on my fly line and the dirty yeah. sloppy water yeah, yeah, that yeah. I was throwing the rod down into measure of yeah. fish and whatever else the rod got coated and stuff and the line got coated and stuff yeah. and I was there at the final session and I was just going to throw the whole lot into the goddamn lake because it was yeah. driving me cracked I knew I needed to get far and I could not achieve Couldn't that because the crap that was on the yeah. rod yeah. And the and on now the I'm not line. saying this would be a 100% solution for that but problem but it go a long way towards us but it just might mm. and if that meant again back to our conversation if that gets me yeah. one more fish or two Two more fish. Absolutely, yeah. Well, it makes all the difference in the competition. Going, so, the yeah, it's really exciting. It's coming down yeah. the road. I'm going to spend probably a month a testing. I'll test it for at least a month. Yeah. Um, and make sure it's perfect. If it's not perfect, it goes back to production again. And we but at some it. point, you will have this for some general point sale. this year. You will you will see the new Dry X component coming on for us. Absolutely. Rats. And yeah. folks, this is already available. This Dry X for for the flies, which is mainly what I'm interested in. The line stick. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of people that are going to be interested in that, yeah. particularly the competition That's people. Fantastic. Yeah. So that'll be available at some point. In the future, Peter, great yeah. credit to you, fair juice to you. That's look what I like you to say keep to the wheels moving. Keep the old, keep the old brain keep the moving. Keep the wheels moving, George. I would be, yeah. be probably thinking about other things in the same line. But anyway, thanks very much for taking the time to explain all this to us. So, folks, that concludes my spin to Kilkenny today. Um, it's easy enough to find sat never to find any place now. It's marvellous sat never, isn't it? I know, isn't it? How would we ever survive without <laughs> how it? I, how, did I, how, how would I ever have found a place maps. like this? Be driving around for ages. The big map but anyway, uh, it was great to come down here today and. Uh, I'm fascinated by this product in particular, being a dry fly angler. I think any, I tell you what, I'll let you know in the future what I think of it. For um, A dry fly, anything that will float my dry flies better, I'm definitely interested in. This, oh maybe not so much for me, but there are a lot of people out there who will definitely be interested in this when it comes into production. And um, if you're interested in fly tying or any aspect of fly fishing, contact Piscarifly.com, is it? Piscarifly.com is us, Charles. Give a shout com. anytime. Or give yeah. a shout down here to the shop. Peter will even make a cup of tea. I will. All right, Peter. Good <laughs> to see you again, Peter. And thanks Always for taking great having you, George. Cheers, bye. Pleasure and thanks, thanks very much indeed. Yeah.